Power pivot pivot tables on the data model can have three benefits. They can create results from multiple input tables that are joined together with table relationships. They can have custom measures that you write using DAX code, and they can have data sources that are over 1 million rows of data. Power Pivot can do tons and tons of different things, but the majority of the times that I use it, I just use it to do what we're going to cover in the first part of this video. So I'll be quick on that, and you can skip the rest of the video if what you want is enough. But if you want to learn the full Power Pivot experience with a Power Pivot window, then stick around till the end of the video. My name is David Nyman. I have tons of videos on Excel, Power BI, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams. If you're using Tech the Workplace, I'm covering my channel. Uh, Power BI uses the Power Pivot structure as well. So if you learn Power Pivot, then you can very easily transition to Power BI. Let's get started. So here we have a demo where we have three tables. Uh, ignore the customer table for now. We've got the country table and data table. So we have the total number of sales, which is row by row because each day we make sales. And then we have the targets, which are at the country level. Now we want to compare whether 100,000 Cambodia target was met in this table. So what we would do is actually we would add some filters and we would compare to Cambodia like this. And we would be able to add these together and then compare that to this number of 100,000. But because we're covering coming from two different tables, this will not be doable with a pivot table. We could do this with a sum if, where we first have the country names. And note that there is one row for Cambodia in the country table, but there are multiple rows for Cambodia in the data table. So the targets will come directly from here, and the sales will need to be an addition of all of these. So that's why we use a sum if here, uh, where we say, give me a sum of the sales column where the country is equal to that. And whereas here we use a VLOOKUP and we say look up this value from the country table and return the number because there is one single value. Then we do the difference and the difference is one minus the other. This is a custom calculation. You can't do these inside a pivot table. Uh, and then you have the percent difference where you are dividing them. But if you're stuck with Excel formulas, then you will get this divide by zero error. Whereas DAX has some new functions which allow you to avoid things like that and do a lot more with your data. So let's get started. So here we have our data and I'm going to reveal the ribbon, control shift F1. Uh, I really like using that one. So in the data tab, you have this one. This is relationships. You also have this, this is power pivot window. We'll get to that later on. But in relationships, we're going to create table relationships between these. I'm going to click on new. I'm going to select the blue columns from both. So the country table, the country column, and I'm going to relate that to the data table and the country column as well. Note that these are using Excel tables. Well, this is, this is my relationships. I'm going to close it. So once you have a power pivot relationship, you can now go to in the insert tab, pivot table and create from data model. Now, if you have an older version of Excel, you would see just one thing for pivot table. And then you would need to take this box, add this data to the data bundle, or in other versions, you might see a third option up here, which says use this workbook's data model. So it does depend on which version you have, but for the most part, you can get to the same thing as long as you have Excel 2013 or more recent. So here I'm going to go pivot table from data model and existing worksheet. That's fine. Press OK. And then I have all of my data tables here. Note that some of them don't have relationships like these ones. This is my formulas table. Uh, if you go to table design, that's formulas and this is customer table. Do recommend naming your tables as well here. Uh, that way you can detect them. So what I can do is I can click on country and I can then click on sales. I can also click on target. So now I've taken things from multiple tables. Now, if we want to create a measure, we can right click on one of the table names and choose add measure. And I'm going to say this is difference and it's going to be equals the sum of target close brackets minus the sum of sales. Notice that there were a few options popping up uh, for good practice. I always use some function with it, not just take what's in the pivot table. And I use the one which has the table name. It just makes it easier to identify later on. So then I'm going to press check DAX formula just to check, then press OK. And then it creates this one with the FX. That means it's a measure that I've custom created. I can click on that and then I get the same as the one above. Let me just cut and paste this so that it is in line and then percent difference. 
So I can do right click and choose add measure. And then I can say this is going to be percent diff equals. And then I have some new functions which are not in Excel called divide. Divide is a safe divider. So you do the numerator, comma the denominator, and then alternative result can be essentially what you can do if there's no, if there's a divide by zero error. So in this case, I want to still do it. So I'm going to do difference, and that is fx. That's one I've already created. You can reuse your measures divided by a sum of uh, targets. So I could use this one, but instead, for good practice, I usually do that one. Close your brackets, and then press check DAX formula. So it doesn't work because it needs me to close my brackets a second time. And then I press check DAX formula and it says this formula contains no errors. Okay. And then if I add that to the values, I will get that here. If it doesn't find the value, because it can't do it, instead of divide by zero, it'll just give me a blank value, which is kind of nice. You can also edit your percentages by making that percent, but you could also uh, right click on it and choose edit measure. And then here I could have said in category, a number, which is a percentage like that in zero decimal places. That also does it. That's probably the better way to do it to adjust your formatting as you see it there. Great. So this is essentially doing what we can do there. And we can also, for example, because it's a pivot table, we can add continent on top of rows. Then we get a subdivision first by continent and then by country. So this is broadly how Power Pivot works. Now, a couple of nuances. What happens if I would have chosen country from the data table? So let me untick these and choose country from the data table. This will actually give me errors because filters work downwards. They don't work upwards. Because of that reason, it tells me relationships may be needed and I can either create them or it can auto detect. I advise not choosing auto detect. But in this case, it's not working because I've done that. Where you see a repeated number like this, that means that you probably picked the thing from the wrong table. Always pick it from the highest table, the one with unique values. So here, country will work. Now I'm going to create another pivot table. Uh, fastest way to do that is just copy and paste. This is still from the data model like that. And if I untick country and target, or well, let's do representative and sales like this. So this currently is showing me an error, but I'm going to create the relationship to make this work. So now what we're going to do is avoid these being errors. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the data tab and choose relationships. And then I'm going to press new and I'm going to choose customer table and the customer. It's going to be related to the data table and the customer. And then it might give you this error, but don't worry about this. Technically, I should do it the other way around, but honestly, it doesn't matter. Just press OK. I never think about when I need to do it because it just figures out that you need to do it the other way around. And there you go. Now I have this that has appeared there. And notice that I do have a blank value. That is because there is a value in the data table that is not in the customer table. Let me show you that. So if I add my filters here, Control Shift L, and I filter, I can see that I have an option for Pepsi. So Pepsi does not have a customer up here, and that means that they're showing me 85K, which as you can see is the addition of these two numbers. So do be careful, just make sure that you have all of the values in the higher table. Um, these tables, I recommend using them anyway to populate data validation list. I think data validation is one of the most underused features in Excel, uh, also in the data tab over here. Now, if I wanted to say add Pepsi, and uh, this is going to be 12, and the person is going to be uh, Karen. Then, yeah, remove that formatting. And then if I refresh, it's now going to get Karen up there. So make sure that you do have the values in here that populate this one, and check with Circle Invalid Data if you don't. Couple more benefits of using this kind of thing. So. Uh, let's say we want to know how many types of fruit each customer has. You can add the fruit column. So if I go to data table, I can add the fruit column, which is here, into values. And then it says I have nine fruits, two, two, and two. But it's not possible that I have nine in this column because my total number of fruits that I have that are different is just one, two, three, four, five. So nine is completely wrong. What we want to do is we want to get a distinct count. So you can right click and you can choose summarize values by distinct count. 
This will only appear if you if you use this from the data model. There we have four, so that's a lot more believable, and five in total. So distinct count, it is a function that you can use in DAX, or it is something that you can just choose from the dropdown that is disabled otherwise. Let me just show you. If I insert a pivot table just over here, that is not from the data model. And then I tried to do, say, customer and fruits. And then in counter fruit, I can right click and I can choose summarize values by and distinct count is grayed out. The only way I could have done it is if I do it from the data model. Or even what you can do is if you want to bypass that step and you just want the distinct count, you can go to insert pivot table and just tick this box, add this to the data model, and then it will allow you to do distinct count. And it'll also allow you to do the next feature, which is you can go to analyze. And I really like this. You can go to OLAP tools and convert to formulas. Not sure what OLAP tools are, but I really like they can do this because now it is using these cube formulas. Don't need to understand them. Just know that they are now completely flexible. You can cut and paste your data. You can delete some rows if they are not relevant and they will still work and they will still be able to refresh. If you go to data and refresh all, they will still work. They will still work from slices, which is pretty cool. Pretty nice. All right, so that's my intro of the main aspects of a pivot table. Let's look at the other stuff that you can do. So uh, you might have this one or you might need to activate it. I'll show you how to activate it if you don't. And this launches the Power Pivot window, which is a completely new screen with different sets of options. And I don't really use this very much. Uh, probably the main thing that I would use it for is a diagram view where you can see your data kind of like a database structure diagram. You can move these around, look at the, the one-to-many relationships, i.e. the top table has unique values, otherwise it doesn't work. So here you can create pivot tables, refresh, uh, you can go to the data view and see the data. This is only really relevant if you have data that is not in your Excel grid, which is rarely what I use it for. But if you are using data that's over a million rows, you will need it to have it here because it can't load up into your Excel table. Uh, you can also get data directly from different places, but I don't advise using this because Power Query is a way better way to get data. Uh, you can create date tables. They are they are really important if you are using dates in your Power Pivot model. And yeah, there's some other stuff here, but honestly, I don't really use this as I was saying. And you also have the Power Pivot tab on the ribbon, which allows you to do different things. So Manage just does the same as the thing on the Data tab. Measures is a better measure manager with manage measures like this, and you can click new. Uh, KPIs, never use this. Add to the data model in case you have a table that you want to add to the data model without adding it to a relationship, but that's very, very rarely used, auto detect and settings. So I rarely use these apart from for manage measures, really. So that's why I usually don't have it in view here. Now, if you're not seeing this, what you can do is go to file and then options and add-ins, and then go to com add-ins, Click go and make sure that this is ticked Microsoft Power Pivot for Excel. Uh, this is available for every version of Excel from 2021 or for previous versions, you have to have the professional, professional plus version of Microsoft Office, which not everyone has. But yeah, if you, even if you don't have those versions, you will do the first part of this formula. You just won't have the Power Pivot window or this tab. But as I said, I rarely use those anyway. I hope you like this video. If you do, then my name is David Van Lyman. I have tons of videos on Excel, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Power BI, Zoom, Teams. If you're using Tech of the Workplace, then I love covering it on my channel. Thanks for watching.